Welcome to the Malibu studio. Today, guys, it's all about girls on grill. I love that she's in an apron that says so. It's Maria Ibrahim, just a great gal, fit food, no, food, foodie, fit, the fit foodie. Fit foodie, thank you. Say that fast three times. Author, nutritionist, fitness person. I met her actually at an expo where she's making these great energy balls. Today, though, guys, it's all about the grill. I'm afraid of the grill. Maria is not. So no. she's going to show us the ins and outs, like, you know, how to clean and um, things like, do we marinate? If we do, how long? What can be marinated? What can't be, right? Yeah. What, what should we start out? Why should women grill? What's the oh deal? Oh, my gosh. Grilling is one of the easiest ways to cook. And it's really something that I think women have been intimidated by, maybe because it's a man's role like traditionally it's like women cook the guys grill and it doesn't have to be that way um i personally love it and i grew up with a dad who always loved to grill and who taught me how so i felt like from a young age he kind of empowered me to do that but you get to be outside you get to play with tools mm -hmm. and the smell of the grill and the versatility of the grill I think is just so exciting um, from a cooking perspective. You can cook everything. You can cook proteins, you can cook fruit, yeah. which I love to do around the summertime. Um, and you develop flavors in a really rich and robust way when you grill because grilling allows you to use all different kinds of wood and you can grill over charcoal and you can add all kinds of seasonings and it's quick and it's fairly mess free. When I'm doing a dinner party or just a party, it could be just two people over, yeah. my husband's in charge of then the protein. And it could be maybe we put some asparagus. But anyway, point yeah. is, it's sort of like I'm at the mercy of that. When a woman is in the kitchen, I think she knows I wash that, I prep that, I've set yeah. that out, at least that's how I go. Yeah. Um, and then I'm just waiting. I'm like, oh, oh, not quite yet. Oh, 15 more minutes. And you're kind of looking at the rest of this stuff going, I kind of want this all to come together. But if I know how to grill, yeah. then I can do full circle, even if that means I have to do everything. Men like fire and they like everything like big and fiery and, you know, crispy, built, burnt, crispy. <laughs> well, we can have, I, and I'm generalizing yes. here. My yes. husband's a great griller. I don't want him to say, uh, what did you say? But, um, but we have a tendency to just watch those things and kind of be a little bit more meticulous. And I think make it a little more feminine. I mean, I love grilling fruit and vegetables and making things pretty. Let's start with the tools because I think that when you have the right tools, just like in the kitchen, you know, as a chef, like you gotta have your good knives, you've gotta have your good cookware, you've gotta have your good solid like cutting board and different cutting boards and, and your tools, the tools that make your life easier. So I always have tongs um, because you can use them for pretty much everything. You can flip veggies, fruit, anything that um, is kind of firm um, and definitely make sure you're using a metal one that's long enough so that you don't burn your hand um, and if you are using one that has silicone just make sure that it's heat proof enough for the grill because your grill is going to get up to 500 degrees and higher always have a metal spatula this one has the serrated edge so that if something sticks i can get under there same with the front of it it allows you to kind of prop things up um, again, this is really good for fish or anything fragile that might break with the tongs. The fork, <laughs> the long fork, which is good for piercing things. Um, I tend to use this with corn, for example. Uh, it allows me to kind of move it when it's on the cob or a steak or a roast or anything like that. The grill brush, let's talk about this because most people use a grill brush. I'm gonna show you one that's actually partially melted because this is what happened to my grill brush. Use this side and scrape this off. I'm just gonna get in there between the grates here. And what's nice about this is it lets you get in at that angle. Remember, I don't like to use that side because look at what happened. Yeah. Not only melted, but these bristles can get in your food and choke you. It's not a good idea. So don't use that part. If you have a grill brush, just use this part. And you can use that to scrape the grill. Um, you want to make sure it's oiled, but then you also want to scrape it when it gets warm. So you oil it first and then scrape it. Definitely a meat thermometer to make sure that your chicken is done. Um, you want to heat that to 165 degrees internal temperature at the thickest part. With meat, it's not as critical, but definitely with chicken and pork. Um, I also always have these wooden skewers on hand. 
Um, I like the versatility of being able to use the wooden ones. Um, just make sure that you soak them for at least 10 minutes prior to putting them on the grill so you don't make a bonfire. These are also skewers and these are great for threading veggies. So if you want to, um, you know, skewer zucchini or um, mushrooms, which sometimes will fall off of these skewers, these end up being a really good um, option. And what I like about them is then you can make fun little shapes. So when you serve them, you put them on the plate and make a little circle, and then you can put your proteins in the inside. I'm telling you, it's fun to be a girl. A pack of them is like 10 bucks, and you can get them on Amazon. This is just my pastry brush. You can use a paint brush even. Um, but this is really good, again, for fruit. Um, when I'm uh, cooking my fruit, I'll like to baste it with a little coconut oil and some cinnamon, for example. Um, and you can get a larger brush to do the meats. I don't tend to wet mop my meat. Um, the way I like to grill is I just do a marinade and then I'll serve the marinade on the side for anybody that wants more. But if you're really serious into that wet mop action, then you need that special kind of brush. <laughs> Always have scissors because this ends up being um, the lifesaver when I'm outside cutting herbs. I like to put herbs on the grill and I'll show you a little hack with rosemary. Rosemary is a great way to prevent carcinogens from um, accumulating on your cooked meats. So I'll just lay a rosemary branch on top and uh, that's what these are for. A microplane because when I am cooking um, or getting my marinades ready, I like to use the peel of citrus. So I'll use this for my lemons or my limes. You just get much more concentrated flavor that way. Two things, I always use gloves when I'm marinating. Um, if I'm in there and working a marinade, like marinating the meat, I do not like to touch it. That is just like, first of all, gross. <laughs> Second of all, bacteria haven. Even if you wash your hands afterwards, it's just not a good practice to touch and kind of work chicken, for example, with bare hands. So <laughs> I keep a box of disposable gloves. I know they're disposable, but I think better safe than sorry. Make sure they fit you because a lot of the gloves out there, they're very big unless you get the right size. And then once I'm on the grill, I'll use this heat glove, which is great because it can get very hot. If you've been holding tongs close to a fire, you know that's all conducting heat. So you can just wear one glove and then have your other hand to be able to do other things. This grill basket is awesome for veggies. Again, things that you don't want to fall into the grill because there's nothing more distressing than like having this beautiful shrimp or something and it's fallen through the grill and there's no saving it. So you can put more delicate things in the grill basket. I also use this for whole fish. Um, it still gets the nice grill marks from the, the grill itself, but this way nothing falls through. Sometimes I'll use this grill mat. This is a mat that you can actually place right on the grill. Um, it looks like a piece of plastic, but it's very high temperature resistant. They also make these in like a copper color. Um, you won't get the sear marks as nice, you'll get some, but this is also a great way to prevent anything from falling through the grates. It comes in a pack of four, and a pack of four I think was like 12 bucks. You can reuse them, I've used this one several times, you can just clean them and reuse them as long as they're not like burned up. Um, this is a grilling tray. You can put your proteins on here as well, or veggie skewers. And then on this side, you can use this side to put a cedar plank. So I'll put like a cedar plank and then grill salmon on there. Um, and that is kind of a fun all in one thing. I got this at cost plus for I think 10 bucks. So it's really important to separate what you're marinating from what you're cooking. I know that sounds like common knowledge, but it's important to say it because cross contamination can really be a disaster. So get yourself a couple of these trays. I actually have three of these and I'll use one just for marinating. And it's nice because the inside have these little grates mm -hmm. um, to be able to kind of like collect the, uh, the marinade and keep it in place. And then I have another one and they stack on top of each other. So they don't take up a ton of space. Um, and at the same time, you're kind of, you're organized. This one says cooked 
and the other one says uncooked. Another thing that I would say is it's really important to use separate cutting boards for your raw and, and cooked. Um, and I don't like to use wood with any raw protein. I only use plastic coated um, cutting boards for raw proteins because I feel like the wood is living and it's really hard to like clean that out of the organic living matter. So keep your wood cutting board for fruits and veggies. Keep separate ones. I just have multicolored ones. I'll use one for chicken, one for seafood, one for pork and it just keeps them all separate and happy. And now we're gonna lay in to marinate. I think that's kind of important, especially if you're trying to do cheap and cheerful and maybe you've got um, a protein that's not like a skirt steak, that's yeah. not that expensive and doesn't have a lot of fat into it, you might need something to help you out, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so I what do you use? There's a lot mm -hmm. of simple things that will break down proteins that tend to be a little bit tougher, like what you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Citrus is one of the best things that you can do. Fresh lemons and limes, super simple, mm -hmm. but they're really versatile and they can be used on seafood, chicken, beef, everything. Um, I also love to use pineapple. Pineapple is an incredible marinade. I'll cut a pineapple, um, juice it, and even use the peel and just lay it on top of mm. what I'm cooking because the enzymes in pineapple and papaya also are really good for breaking down your proteins. So those are definitely essentials. Fresh garlic is a must. Um, I use it all the time and what I love to do is I'll just put this in a little tin foil and put it on the grill with some olive oil and herbs. Grilled garlic is maybe the most underrated condiment ever. It's so simple to make and makes everything better. I have rosemary growing outside. Um, you can use basil, you can use oregano. Um, your, your spice rack becomes like something that you can really lean into for your marinade flavor as well. Dijon mustard adds a ton of flavor and again, very versatile. You can use it for all your proteins and it's great with veggies. It even goes with sweet things. I have a marinade that I use on grilled peaches that has the Dijon that's super, super tasty. It's just like a little subtle taste of the Dijon. Um, a good olive oil, this is actually an olive oil that I got from a, a a local winery, so that's why it doesn't have a label, but I won't use this necessarily for the marinade, I'll use it to finish. For the marinade itself, I'll use, you know, maybe a sunflower oil or a, a regular olive oil, one that's kind of larger. This is more of like my finishing oil, and this would go into more of my marinade. Coconut oil is great, and it's good for high heat. Um, and again, it imparts, this one is, unrefined and it's raw so you do taste a little coconut and this is where you can infuse a little tropical flavor into your foods it's great with fruit um, but if you don't like the taste of coconut coconut oil you can use a refined coconut oil and that won't have the flavor this flavor is just so near and dear to my culture and my upbringing so that's why i love to use this um, again I'll, I'll use this with a variety of things it's amazing with chicken and that would be what, Maria? Where are you from? Oh, I'm Egyptian. <laughs> so Middle Eastern flavor, flavor profile for sure. It even says molasses in Arabic here. But, um, you know, I think this little um, sweetness, just a little punch of sweetness where somebody might use honey, for example. I like to eat honey uncooked and raw. Like that to me is the best way to experience the benefit of it. But for just sweetness, a little bit of this goes a long way. This is a new discovery, but something I really love is this Just Date Syrup. It's literally date syrup. And dates are super low glycemic index, which is amazing because they're so sweet. So you get fiber in here and you also get that rich date taste, which is an incredible finishing syrup that you can drizzle over grilled peaches and it's unbelievable with a little coconut whipped cream. Balsamic vinegar for sure is a great way to just balance that um, the fat and having a little punch of acidity whenever you have something with fat is really good for balance. Um, some things really don't need to be marinated because they're so good on their own. Like. I mean, you could add a marinade, but you don't necessarily have to. Like, for example, a beautiful piece of wild-caught salmon. Wild-caught salmon just needs a little spice. You don't need to drown it in a bunch of stuff. Um, I think a little drizzle of 
you know, some citrus with maybe just a touch of, you know, maybe you want to do a little maple syrup. Maybe you want to do a little of the molasses, but just very, very minimal. And I would say you don't even need to marinate it. You can just put it over the top. Marinades are really important when you have like a cut of meat or poultry or something that requires more time to add flavor. So for example, I always marinate chicken. I always marinate um, steak, uh, like the, the tougher cuts of steak. A filet mignon doesn't need to be marinated, right? So it's just about what the product is, what the protein is, and if it needs a little coaxing in terms of flavor or if there's a ton of flavor on its own. Chicken on its own, I never grill chicken breast anymore just because my family doesn't like it, but chicken thighs, they're all about it and I definitely make sure that those get nice and soaked with marinade. Same with a tri-tip or a flank steak. Um, you know, even a roast. Sometimes we'll put a roast on the grill very low and slow. That can get a nice marinade and, and benefit from that. The marinade itself is created to help tenderize and flavor the food. So if you have a delicate fish, it will actually break it down and make it much less fun to cook because you don't want your fish flaking and breaking on the grill. You want to think about what goes on the grill needs to have some sturdiness to it so that it doesn't completely overcook because you're cooking on direct heat so it'll cook a lot faster um, and you want to think about like what will benefit from the grilling flavor a thicker cut is going to benefit from a marinade so we're going to get the base of our marinade done so i've got my regular olive oil and i'm going to add some orange juice to this this is just pure orange juice it's going on chicken thighs, and I think this is going to be really nice with a little bit of citrus. Um, I'm going to do some lime juice here, and then a little bit of that um, pomegranate molasses that I was telling you about with a couple of other ingredients. So first of all, we're going to add a little bit of fat. We don't need a ton of fat because these are chicken thighs, and I just like to emulsify. So I'm going to add about three tablespoons right there. And then I'm gonna add my, um, where's my balsamic? Right here, my balsamic. So three, and then I'm gonna add one tablespoon of balsamic. And this way I get a nice base to add my citrus to. So we get a nice emulsified mixture here. And then we can start adding everything else. So I'm gonna add a little bit of Dijon mustard I'm not going to add a lot. I just want a little bit of flavor. My husband doesn't love it. So part of this is eyeballing it to just make sure that you get the consistency you want for what you're marinating. If you need something a little thicker to stick to whatever you're marinating, that's an important thing to view. I'm going to add my pomegranate molasses, which is also fairly sticky. I'm going to add my orange juice. About. You marinate what you're cooking at least six to eight hours prior to cooking, up to two days in advance. Just depends on what you're doing. Before you add your fresh citrus, make sure you get that microplane out. Oh, and before that, make sure you wash it with Eat Cleaner. Yes. <laughs> you got to make sure you wash all your produce before you cut or grate so that you get the residue off. That helps to remove up to 99.9% of the wax, pesticide residue, and the nasty stuff that can carry bacteria. And feel free to shameless plug that. <laughs> Maria, how long have you, Maria is the proud owner of the company uh, Eat Cleaner, yes. and it's served such a great purpose for most of us uh, because foodborne illness doesn't always come from meat, right? No, in <laughs> fact, the number one cause is leafy greens. So gotta make sure you wash your produce. Um, and we've been around for over a decade and we really have the science and the studies behind us. It's USDA bio-based certified and EPA Safer Choice label certified. And uh, we had to prove our efficacy to get those. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's real. Now I'm getting some lime juice in there. That lime with the pomegranate molasses mm. is really, really fun. 
little orange juice. And then I'm going to add just a little pepper to this. And you could make this sweeter if you want. I like to keep things on the less sweet side just for health reasons. Taste it. Ooh, that tastes good. Think about it as infusing flavor. You can even score your meat as you marinate so that it really seeps into it, and that's what we're gonna do. Just give, I'm gonna add a little bit of date syrup to my melted coconut oil. And again, I like the sweetness of using this kind of oil. Mm -hmm. And then just mix those together, brush our peaches. I got these at the farmer's market. I'm Yum. so excited. And then we're going to put those cut side down on our pan. And then that way they won't stick. Oh my goodness. These are incredible. These are again, fresh in season. Oh, I know they smell good. Don't they? Yeah. These are beautiful with a little topping. I like to put a little lebney on top. Oh, I don't or a little to... ricotta. Lebney is like a, a strained yogurt, Middle Eastern oh. style strained yogurt. So mm. delicious. Interesting. And uh, some people like to wrap them in prosciutto. Oh yeah. I love it all. I want the nice grill marks on the peaches, but I don't necessarily need them on the figs. I am not going to add really much of anything to this because I like to add other things to it. What I like to do actually just leave them in the husk. I take the outer husk out and just leave the tip off. I'll leave them in here so it'll kind of steam in there. Nice. Once your grill's clean, turn on the heat to 375 to grill the produce. We're looking for grill marks and nice juicy fruit. The corn will go on the grill for much longer. For the chicken, we turn it up to 400 degrees. And the chicken will have been marinating for about six to eight hours, but Maria scores the meat first. Remember, we've oiled the grill. There's a little oil in the marinade too, and then that'll just go right on. Think about five minutes each side if protein is about one inch thick. This chicken, about 12 minutes total. Look at that. We don't want to overcook and dry them out, that's for sure. Maria reminds us that the meat will continue to cook when removed from the heat. So while she eyeballs for doneness, she uses the meat thermometer when plated. You don't want to make the mistake of cooking it and overcooking it while it's on the grill. These are looking good. I think they're ready. To get the meal camera ready, she tops the peaches with a strained yogurt that has a whipped cream consistency. She makes a corn topping similar to Mexican elote, but this one uses herbed feta and olive oil smeared on the corn. Okay, guys, here <laughs> you have it. We're sorry you're not here to share this with <laughs> us, but we just enjoyed so much. Love this, Maria. You're so good at this. Thank Obviously, you. she's a chef. You can tell, right? <laughs> she definitely knows the ins and outs. So hopefully you've got a lot of tips and tricks out of this. And Chef Maria has a website. Shocker. It's chefmaria.com. You'll see that on the screen. Please log on. She'll give you the recipes and a lot of the uh, little um, places that you can go for maybe even a little discount here and there, right? Yeah, we have a mm -hmm. discount and then we also have some nice fun tips that I talked about today yeah. on grilling for girls. Set girls on grill. All right, guys. Okay. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you at the Melody Studio again real soon. Thank you.